Hello there. Today I'm taking a look at a, a Hawke's Bay Syrah. Probably think we've seen a few Hawke's Bay Syrahs recently, and that's to be fair. This is Tamarta's Estate Syrah. So it's a Hawke's Bay wine, and it's from the 2022 vintage. So the reason we're looking at this is that the Wine Searcher wine team are, are making a wine at the moment, and we've just harvested some fruit from a vineyard in the Bridge Park Triangle. So we've picked and crushed that. So we were the other day we were tasting the grapes, we were tasting the juice, and we were tasting the first fermenting juice. So we wanted a, a wine to compare it to, so this was the one we chose. Now Tamata, quite a well-known, quite a historically significant winery in the Hawke's Bay region. One of the older wineries, actually set up as a sheep station originally in 1854 by somebody called John Chambers. And in 1892, his son Bernard returns from France and decides that the region is actually really well suited to growing grapes. So he sets about converting the, the stable into a winery and planting vines. And they, they have their first commercial vintage in 1896. So the vineyard enterprise grows here, and in the period before the First World War, Temata is pretty much the largest winery in New Zealand. And then after the First World War in 1919, the Chambers family sell the estate, at which stage they, they set up Temata Vineyards as an entity. And that has two more owners through until 1972, when a combination of the, the Buck family and the Morris family buy Temata. And they're ambitious for, for the winemaking venture and they invest heavily. There are lots of specifically designed buildings erected on the site. The vineyards are renewed. There are new vineyards invested in. And in the period since the 1970s, I think it's fair to say that Temata, particularly for its top wine, the Coleraine, has been propelled to the top level of New Zealand's wines. I mean, I think Coleraine is justifiably one of the top two or three Cabernet Merlot wines from New Zealand. Certainly, Temata have a commitment to making high-quality Syrah. Their Bullnose is a wine originally simply from the Bridge Par Triangle. These days, I think they're now putting some fruit from the Hotspur Vineyard in Gimlet Gravels in there as well. But then the Estate wine takes some fruit both from Bridge Par and from the Gimlet Gravels, but is predominantly from their Woodthorpe Terraces vineyards. And the Woodthorpe Terraces is some of the investment that went on in terms of vineyard. It's a 220 hectare area of vineyard, including a, a wide spread of grape varieties, everything from Bordeaux grape varieties through to Gamay, there's Pinot Noir, there's Syrah planted there, but also white varieties, and Chardonnay, I think there's some Sauvignon Blanc and Viognier. So quite a large vineyard, and that's the predominant supplier of the Syrah for this. And then I'm assuming that any fruit that comes from Bridge Par or the Gimlet Gravels will have been downgraded from the Bullnose to make it into this wine. In terms of winemaking, as the, the fruit is harvested by plot and it's vinified by plot giving the winemaker a number of blending options. There's an extended skin maceration after fermentation to in ensure good extraction of tannins, colours and flavours. And once the wine's undergone its malolactic conversion, it's put into French oak barrels to age. It ages for a year in those barrels. They are a, a mixture of new and seasoned oak. So there's less new oak than the bullnose will get. And there's a shorter period of barrel ageing. The, the bullnose spends, I think it's 15 or 16 months in barrel and this will spend a year in barrel. Those barrels are kept topped up and they're racked regularly. And then prior to bottling, the wine is gently egg white fine. So just a warning there, if you're a vegan, this is a, is a wine you might choose to avoid. Um, so let's have a look at the wine, shall we? Firstly, just looking at the color there. The color is a deep, dark ruby red, but it's, it's not opaque by any means. I mean, it's, a, it's a probably medium to deep at best. The wine has 13% alcohol, but seems to have plenty of viscosity. It's leaving quite generous tears on the side of the glass there. So let's see what we think of the aroma, shall we? As far as I can see, there are three elements to those aromas. Two are fruit elements. There's a, 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 a sort of a rich, juicy red fruit, mulberry sort of top note. There's a richer core of dark fruit, maybe dark plum. A little bit more brooding comes a little later. And all that is overlaid with some savoury and spicy notes. So there's a sort of a, a dusty note, 
there's a peppery note there's a little bit of oak that is sort of cedar and vanilla and perhaps there's even the, the sort of the start of a little bit of developed dried leaves sort of forest floor notes there in the aromas so let's taste The wine has a good peppery grip on the, the front palate. There's a nice freshness. There is some of that juicy red mulberry fruit, but it's sitting behind that sort of slightly savoury, slightly earthy, rather peppery notes there. There's a bit of structure. There's a, a little bit of tannic grip at the, at the beginning there. The wine has a roundness to the mid palate. I think that's perhaps helped by the alcohol, but there is this lovely sort of juicy red fruit. But then sitting behind that, there is this sort of dark plum. And that sort of changes as, as the, the back palette sort of fades relatively quickly. And you're left with this sort of slightly plum jam note on a finish. And there's enough freshness that the, it's sort of red fruit and plum, uh, sort of mulberry and, and dark plum, with layers of sort of cedar, a little bit of pepper there. The wines of mid-weight, it, it's reasonably complex but really just to an extent of having good Syrah character. There's the spiciness, there's a little bit of meatiness, perhaps in those savoury notes that I'm talking about there. A touch of black olive, perhaps, that sort of side of things. And, and then there's this underlying dark black brooding fruit. But there's not a huge amount of complexity. The, the mid palate fades a bit and the, the finish perhaps a little light but has reasonable length I mean you know it's, this is a, a nicely made syrup and I'd put it sort of at the quality as being the quality equivalent of a, a good quality Cote de Rhone sort of the sort of Cote de Rhone that is 100% syrup a nice example but not for long aging probably three or four years at most it's open it's providing some nice drinking and the spiciness would enable you to pair it with some like full flavored dishes it's got enough freshness it would go up against sort of fats and proteins very nicely so yes a, a very accomplished wine and i think it's a good illustration of the fact that new zealand syrah can be quite classic in its style it's certainly not like an australian shiraz and Actually, they can offer some really quite nice value for money. If you compare them price-wise, I mean, if, if you're looking at I will put a link in the notes here that takes you to the Wine Searcher website and you can see what the pricing for this is and what the availability of it is in your market. But this is about a third of the, of the price of their bullnose, for instance. So I think it makes it quite competitive with those sort of more expensive Cote de Rhone's, Crozet Hermitage, that sort of thing. And there is a very similar style to the wine so thank you very much for watching i hope you found the video of interest if you've enjoyed it please press the like button if you have friends you think might enjoy watching it do feel free to share it with them it would be, be great for you to pass it on do please sign up and follow us on youtube that way you can set yourself a, um, a notification and you can find out every time we release a new tasting note do please also leave your comments in the comments box below. We appreciate the feedback that you leave and we really hope that you'll take some time to join us in another tasting in the very near future. Thanks again. Bye for now.